Psycho was a good game, but its finicky AI, clunky combat, and occasional odd solution to puzzles kept it from being something truly great. But seeing as The Last Guardian finally went gold, let's look at Team Ico's second title, Shadow of the Colossus. While I did enjoy the story of Ico, it did expect the player to care about our means a little too much. The game never has moments of significant character development, it instead tries to show the relationship through the gameplay, which isn't a bad thing, but it just didn't do much for me, partly because the 15 years since release have not been kind to the gameplay. Why do I bring this up? Because Shadow of the Colossus tells its story in the same way. You play as Wanda, a Link wannabe who's travelled to a temple at the end of the world, or something, to bring his cursed girlfriend back from the dead. To do this, he must find 16 beasts known as Colossi and defeat them, and in turn, he will get his girl back. That's it. Just like Ico, you only have one objective that ties into the gameplay, and it does feel like a classic game story in the same vein as its predecessor. I wasn't as invested as the game would have liked me to be, but honestly, if I didn't care about Yorda in the last game, then a girl who's too dead to care what I was doing for her was hardly going to win me over. I also found the ending, well it ties nicely into Ico, unless I'm reading into it too much, didn't feel hugely satisfying, but I'll admit it's grown on me since first experiencing it. Days in, and it's clear that this studio's storytelling isn't quite for me. But I still liked both these stories, I'm just not as invested as I feel I should be. If The Last Guardian has a few more cutscenes to make me care about what's actually happening, then I'll be very happy indeed. Anyway, enough of that artsy fartsy stuff, how's the actual gameplay? Before you can kill the Colossi, you have to find them. To do this, you lift your sword up and a beam of light will show you where to go. Now you and your faithful steed must travel across the overworld to find your enemy. And about that overworld, why is it so big when most of it's just an empty field? I honestly don't get why so many old games did this. Yeah, it's big, but also incredibly boring. Oof, getting back on track, finding your destination is usually fairly easy. The light can sometimes screw you over, but nothing a quick trip to IGN won't fix. Anyway, once you arrive at your destination, you'll have to- HOLY CRAP! This is the first BOSS? Now we get to the fun part! Each Colossi has a symbol somewhere on their body, and all you have to do is climb on them, find their weak spot, stab them, and the bloodbath begins! What differs from Colossi to Colossi is how you climb onto them. Is it epic enough, but how does it actually play out on controller? Given the massive size of your foes, you'll be doing a lot of climbing. I was satisfied with Ico's platforming, and it's even better here. The best analogy to describe how it plays out would be that it's like Uncharted's platforming, but more skill is required. It's a satisfying system that rarely shows its age. Well, that's not to say it's entirely disguised. Okay, something like Wanda not lifting itself up offers only minor irritations, but I HATE IT when the Colossi is shaking about trying to get you off. Okay, if I was a giant monster and some small human was climbing up me, I'd probably shake about too, so what's my problem? My problem is that when this is happening, you can't do anything! Again, that doesn't sound too annoying, so here's a scenario. You've just gotten to the top of the Colossi, positioned yourself for attack, but you're being flipped around, you have just a moment to attack, but then the whole process starts up again before you've charged up a strike strong enough to make damage, and while all this is happening, your stamina is slowly decreasing, so your only option is to wait for the shaking to stop, move back to regain your energy, but the Colossi's still swinging about. It can be really annoying. Other frustrations can be explained by poor design. In Ico, whenever you'd get hit, it would take forever for you to get up. Here, the exact same! This is especially frustrating when an enemy hits you, and before you had a chance to get back up, you'll be knocked over again. In this particular fight, I had to wait for him to kill me. While we're on that particular fight, whilst the solutions to most fights are generally easy for you to figure out, some of them can be really obscure, meaning my frequent guide trips from Ico are still present here. 
Sometimes I'll know what to do but miss a piece of vital info required to defeat them, but really, moments like that can happen to anyone in any situation. I'm also not the biggest fan of the fights with your horse Agro. During traversal, he works fine, well, mostly. Well, that seems natural. But aside from that, all I can complain about is getting stuck on top of a small hill. It's a nitpick, but can be a- WHAT THE HELL?! WHY CAN'T HE JUMP OFF MOST HILLS?! Anyway, the fights with him can be annoying, especially whilst using the bow. Take this fight, for example. While the horse will move automatically, he'll occasionally stop at walls, and then the aiming for your bow can get really weird. The monster rarely comes out for you to attack, and FINALLY! Hang on. I'm being really harsh on the game, and it can be really frustrating, but at the same time, this is one of the most adrenaline pumping games I've ever played. When you begin climbing up the Colossi, few games are as thrilling, right up until you deliver those final strikes, and most of the bosses are good. Even the ones I've complained about earlier were at least decent ideas, but for every mere boss, there's a great one just around the corner. Personal favourites of mine include this giant bird whose wings you have to climb up before it goes into flight. Jumping on was a bit trial and error, but it was still a sight to behold, especially when you're running across the bird whilst in flight. Another favourite of mine comes right after the giant bird I was just talking about, in which you have to climb away from the colossi as it knocks over the beams you were platforming on. It was great fun and one of the game's most unique fights. In fact, out of all the 16 Colossi, I only really hated two, but because I hated them, killing them was unbelievably satisfying. Stop the giant git! Stop him! Stop him! Stop him! Overall, the fight against the Colossi can be vague, annoying, and occasionally loathsome due to poor design, but they're also epic, fun, and some of gaming's most intense moments. Next up on the gameplay department... Wait, that's it? Yeah, you exit the temple, follow the light, find the boss, climb onto them, find their weak spot, kill them, and repeat for seven and a half hours. This sounds repetitive, but for some reason it didn't bother me much, but I'll admit once the game began to reach the climax, I was definitely ready for it to be over. So what's my final verdict? It's overall a pretty good game. I can't deny that it did really frustrate me at times, but the sheer scope of the Colossi fights makes for thrilling gameplay, and I haven't even spoken about the amazing soundtrack, which sounds like something from a fantasy blockbuster. Overall, I had a really good time with this game. Do I prefer it to Ico? Yeah, but only just, and even now there's a nagging feeling at the back of my head that's telling me Ico's better. Either way, Shadow of Colossus walks away with 82% under its colossal belt. The remastered collection is well worth a purchase, and I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on The Last Guardian. It's been 10 years to improve over the issues of Team Ico's first two games, so I can hardly wait to see how the final product turns out.